All right, guys, here to talk about the 2017 Liberty football schedule. Paul, I'll present the first thought to you. Building schedules, you've done it for a long time. What do you enjoy about it? Well, number one, it's a little bit stressful at times because when you only have five teams now in the Big South, you basically have to go out every year and find five or six, sometimes seven uh, teams to build your schedule on. And, you know, when I work closely with Mickey Garitti on the scheduling, it's something that I enjoy doing. But again, we look at this schedule, I look at it in three tiers. You have teams that, like this year coming up against the Baylor, that, you know, it's going to be a, it's a difficult game to win. You know, they're a, a Big 12 team. And then you have your second tier of teams like Jacksonville State, Charleston Southern now, even a St. Francis who has done well. Those are teams that you're going to really have to fight, but you have a chance to win. And then the, th the other tier of teams is that, you know, you're expected to win. So you try to balance that out, in my opinion, to the best of your ability to put your team in the be best position to win. First game out of the shoot is going to be September 2nd at Baylor. First ever meeting between the Bears and the Flames. Yeah, the same faith background and a lot of storylines into yes. this one that will uh, have very little to do with the game itself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously with uh, Ian McCall coming to Liberty University, the former athletics director at Baylor. Uh, a lot of talking points about that game going into the week and it'll be a fun trip heading down there to, uh, to Waco. But, uh, you know, Bears have been a tough team throughout the years. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a team they put together out there on the field as uh, as you mentioned with the new head coach, a lot of uncertainty down there. They've had some issues with keeping some of their uh, com commits from some of their recruits right. down there. So uh, we'll see what kind of a team that they field. But, uh, you know, 6-6 six and six this year, you know, the Flames defense a year older. Maybe they can go in there and show well. And a couple of years into their new stadiums, so that's going to be fun right. to visit their place down there in Waco. Home opener is September 9th, Moorhead State, ninth all-time meeting between the Eagles and the Flames, and you got to go back to 1991, last time these two teams matched up, Paul. And I remember that trip specifically. I'll give you a little humor. We were stopping, going three buses chartering to, uh, to Moorhead State, and uh, we're going to go to the stadium for a walkthrough. And sure enough, we get off the team, get off the bus, and we don't have any footballs. So I had to oh run gosh. down. I had to run down to the sporting goods store Stop. to find three oh footballs, no. so we could have a walk through practice on that Friday. I'll never forget that story. They so, weren't deflated, were they? No, they weren't deflated. Okay. So we can were in compliance. Imagine. But that was that was a uh, unique story. We get all lined up, get into the stadium, ready to, to have a practice. And hey, did you bring a ball? Did you bring a ball? Oh no, we had no balls. <laughs> Talking so, about those things about you have the buddy system about your yep. roommate. Hey, did you wake him up? He missed the bus. Exactly. You know, Can you imagine like the guy I played against sports when Paul comes running in there looking for football? And there's, <laughs> yeah, there's three charter buses, and the guys say, "Oh, I'm going to get a great order here. Hey, I just need three footballs." Oh gosh. <laughs> it's like you get at a restaurant with a charter bus, yeah. and all people are squirting around trying to figure out, "Oh gosh, we got to clean these tables yep. at a buffet place." Oh, uh, game three, 16th Indiana State. Again, we go back a couple of years ago with that team. We played them up there in Terre Haute. They were 4-7 and seven, uh, this past season. All right, the 23rd second road game, Nick, I'll present this next question to you. At Jacksonville State, Gamecocks were 10-2. and two. Only two losses were to LSU to begin the season and to Youngstown State. Probably a surprising loss to a lot of people in the playoffs. But a deep challenge for Liberty, and we, again, we saw them this past fall. Yeah, I'll tell you, they were as good an FCS team as I've ever seen in person. Uh, they, they were the real deal. But they do lose Eli Jenkins this year. Uh, Rock Thomas, the really good running back, will be back, though. So, uh, you know, John Gross, the head coach there, has a, a very unique way of uh, reloading, so to speak. Uh, he doesn't have to uh, really go through a whole lot of turnover down there. Um, very good recruiter. I, I, it's going to be a very tough game going down there and playing at their place. We saw what they were able to come here to Williams Stadium and do. Yeah. Uh, but the Flames, you know, again, defense a year older. Maybe they can go down there and, uh, and do some things. You've got to play well early in that game, try to take the crowd out of it. They didn't play, Flames didn't play very well early against Jacksonville State here at Williams Stadium last year. So Jacksonville State is game number four, September 30th, back at home, third home game, St. Francis, a team that a lot of people last year didn't realize they went 7-5. and five. They actually went to the playoffs, winning the NEC Conference, lost to Villanova. And I go back to my first game, 2010, which we played them at City Stadium. So it's going to be cool to kind of renew that series with them. Yeah, much improved football team. I think they've got a lot of confidence. Um, you know, they played Villanova in the first round and stayed close. 
wasn't a blowout by any means like some of the teams we've seen in the FCF playoffs this year, but they played them extremely well. So they'll come in here with a lot of confidence. They travel well. They play well on the road. So I'm expecting a competitive football game with them. The open date is going to hit Liberty on October the 7th. And then, Nick, Kennesaw State comes a calling first league game. Always important to start league playoff on the right foot. Yeah, and I think it's unique, too, that the Flames for a second straight year have the open date right before conference play starts and right before facing Kennesaw State. It's a good thing to get the Owls here at home, though, this year. Uh, three of your conference games were on the road. They're going to be a third-year program that's even better, you know, into that third year. So uh, that, that's not going to be a gimme. Uh, that's going to be a tough, hard-fought game here at home. I'm sure the Flames are, are, are glad to have it here. And then back-to-back -back road games in league play October 21st at Monmouth, the 28th at Gardner-Webb. And I think, Paul, on November 4th, you have scheduled Duquesne. And I think that was one of the last games to get scheduled here. So t give us an insight to that series and a team that was 8-3 and three last year. Yeah, another NEC Northeast Conference school that we scheduled late. That was a very difficult date to fill because of where it lined up in conference play for them and for us. And it just happened that we both had an open date. We were trying not to schedule a Division II school, which we could have, mm -hmm. to make it easier. but. We try to make it as far as, you know, countable games. You have to schedule FCS games. So we were very fortunate. Both teams lined up. And that'll be another competitive game, like you said, Alan, 8-3 and three in the NEC. Um, you know, they're, they're a good football team. L recruit a lot of kids out of the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. So they'll be ready to play. And again, Duquesne and St. Francis, both on the schedule, finished 5-1 and one in the NEC. Mm -hmm. St. Francis won the tiebreaker because they beat right. Duquesne in the regular season. So Duquesne 8-3 and three coming in on November the 4th. And then, Nick, we wrap up this season, uh, the 11th here at home against PC, then the 18th, which could go down as, as a big game at Charleston Southern. Yeah, you know, Charleston Southern, November the 18th. Flames haven't uh, won down there since uh, 2013, if memory serves me correctly. But, uh, yeah, that, that'll be a big challenge. Uh, Presbyterian with a new head coach this year as mm -hmm. well on uh, November the 11th. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting, I think, also with having Duquesne, a non-conference game, that late in the season. That's not something that we, that we see very often. But, uh, you know, it could be playing for all the marbles against Charleston Southern, but you got to get it done against Monmouth and Gardner-Webb first. Absolutely. The last exactly. two trips to those two schools did not go well for the Flames. And Gardner-Webb, even here last year at Williams Stadium. Overtime. Ball, yeah, it's took overtime. overtime. You know, and so. like you said, Alan, those are two extremely important games because, uh, you know, when we start with Kennesaw State, you basically, in essence, run the gauntlet where now you have got to win. We've known this. You've got to win those games in order if you're going to advance to the uh, FCS playoffs. Hopefully, maybe if something happens in 17 where well, your body of work is good enough, well, maybe they'll take two teams in the Big South. Another challenging slate on the docket for Liberty football starts off September 2nd at Baylor.